There's nothing cuter than a kid cheesing at his own birthday cake, especially when it's my kid. Hey, it's Jakey and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited because today is my son's birthday, September 11th, and I'm sharing with you the cake that I made him for his third birthday. He is a huge Toy Story fan. He requested a Toy Story cake, so that is what I made for him. I don't know if it'll happen this way, but in my mom brain, my kids are gonna look back every birthday, even as they're adults, and I no longer make them a birthday cake, and they're gonna remember the special cakes that I made them. Not because they tasted amazing, but because they could request whatever they wanted and mom made it happen. And I don't know if they'll do that, but I really hope so, and I love pouring my heart into their cakes. When my oldest daughter was about to turn one, she's almost 10 now, I took a cake decorating class just to learn some basics, and I really had fun throughout the years just developing my skills, adding new tools. And while I normally love to make the cakes from scratch and decorate them, I kind of took a shortcut today, and that's what I'm gonna share with you. So the first shortcut I took in my homemade cake was buying that Wilton four pack of the primary colored fondant. I did that because I really wanted to represent the Toy Story brand well and I knew that it would be difficult to get the bold blue and especially the bold red. So I wanted to make sure that I could get something as authentic as possible and the Wilton colors were exactly what I was looking for. So I went ahead and just purchased that fondant. I did still end up making my own fondant for the clouds, you'll see that in a little bit. But these colors were absolutely perfect and for $9 it saved me a lot of headache of trying to make the right color and it would take a ton of food coloring to get that red and that blue anyways. So it was time saved and well worth the slight investment and I still have a lot of fondant left over. So here I am cutting out all of my letters. I don't do any sort of perfection or use cookie cutters. I just use a knife and I weed it out and then I kind of push my sides in to get it to look a little better and I do believe that writing turns was the worst part of all my fondant work because those letters were so little but it's fun to just kind of cut and get the shape you want and guess what if you mess up you just roll it all into a ball again and flatten it out. Working with fondant is honestly so fun. I love using fondant. I don't necessarily like to cover a cake in fondant and I don't really like to eat fondant but I love playing with it. It's literally like my adult version of Play-Doh. So if you've ever liked Play-Doh or you like to play Play-Doh with your kids, I highly recommend that you try fondant if you've never done it. It is just a lot of fun and it really makes a cake pop in my opinion because you can make so many fun decorations and you don't have to find something specific in the store. You can make exactly what you're looking for and that is what I did here. I was really pleased with how this turned out compared to the Toy Story logo and now I moved into making my own fondant. Fondant is so easy to make. I really enjoy the process. It's very fun and I've shared before that even when I make breads I love kneading. So if I get to knead a bread dough or a pizza crust or the fondant it's something that I really enjoy doing. I like watching something come together and playing with it in my hands. I don't know why but I really love it. So I have a fondant playlist. If you have never made fondant and you're interested in actual step-by-step -step directions, I have a playlist. It has three videos, how to make fondant, how to color fondant, and how to store fondant. It gives you all the basics and allows you to have the basic understanding of fondant so that you can play with it. So I did cut out a lot of my kneading of my fondant because it took a lot longer than what I showed you, but it is just a labor of love. You just do it over and over again and it eventually comes together. Here I took an acorn cookie cutter and I stenciled out that pattern and then I cut it in half and that made my little clouds. I was quite proud of that discovery and it made the process much easier than hand carving out each individual cloud. And if you are familiar with the original Toy Story, Andy's room is a light blue with cloud background and that is used in a lot of their advertising and logos and that is why I went with clouds on a light blue background for the cake. I did end up making some one, two, three blocks here. I didn't really know if I'd use them on the cake. I didn't end up using them, but it was fun to try them, even though they didn't turn out to be super cute as I intended. What are we doing? That's really my birthday cake. Are you really excited? Yeah! What do you think of it so far? The blue and yellow. Wait, what do you think though? You like it? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna make it Toy Story, right? 
Okay. Okay guys, so one thing that I did to make this birthday cake way easier than normal is I went to the store and I bought a cake. So just the five of us are gonna eat this. We're not gonna eat it for many days, so I got a small one. And instead of making a cake from scratch, filling it, making it the flavors he wanted, making my icing, coloring the icing, hoping I get the colors I want, I went a little easier this time to give myself a break. You saw that I bought the pre-made colored fondant. I made my own white fondant. And then I bought this cake for $11.99. They did light blue like I wanted with a yellow border. It's marble cake, it's buttercream icing, and I just had to pick it up, which was a pretty sweet deal. And because I'm super crunched for time this week, it worked really well instead of going full on from scratch. And I can decorate it and still personalize it and really deliver it with love. One great thing about fondant is you can make your pieces and store them for a long time before you actually need them. I only did it a few days ahead of time, but it allowed me to work on my piece well before the cake needed to be done. And that is something that is fun about it because you actually want your fondant to dry out a little bit if you want it to hold its shape and you don't want it to become really gummy on the cake or have the icing um, kind of melt into the fondant. It really helps if you dry it out a little bit, especially if they're pieces that are going to be removed and not actually eaten with the cake. We won't probably eat this fondant. My kids might have some of the clouds, but I know Matt and I will just peel the fondant off before we eat it but making it ahead of time is really helpful. And Cal was able to just help me press these pieces on and it was so easy and quick. So we have these sprinkles, they are primary colored stars. I thought they were perfect for Toy Story. And we are going to just, I'm gonna try to border up here. That's what my goal is with this. But Cal wants to help and it's gonna be a little harder. Do you wanna help? Is this your birthday cake? Yeah. How old are you gonna be? Three. Good job, buddy. You're so so good. I really wanted to add the sprinkles just to the border because I thought they were super cute and I didn't want them to be everywhere and make the cake too busy. So while I wanted to incorporate them, I only wanted them on the very edges. And these kind of sprinkles actually taste not that good to me. Kel ended up eating a few and he said, why do these taste like rotten eggs? So. They are more cute than they are delicious, and I didn't want to overwhelm the cake with rotten egg sprinkles, you know what I mean? So we are just adding them to the edge, and it took a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, especially when you're doing it with an almost three-year-old, but it was super cute, and I like how it ended up coming together, and I love that it brought a little bit of green into the cake beside just the three primary yellow, blue, and red. Here we are just finishing it up. I'm kind of cleaning up some of Kel's uh, choice placement not quite on the border but he had a lot of fun and it was more fun to decorate it with him than I expected it to be and I was so pleased with how the cake came together and we did end up adding as you'll see in a few minutes we will have some figurines displayed and here Cal is just totally loving his cake and giving it the side eye that freeze frame just was hilarious Calvin me. is this your favorite cake ever yes don't pick it up no, thank you. <laughs> Wait, show me how old you are. Three! Yay! Bye, buddy. I love you. I love you. I have said in so many videos, I am not a perfectionist, and I know that this cake is not perfect, especially if you look at the fondant work up close. There are nicks, and there's a little bit of bumping here and there, but I would so much rather spend time and make it look pretty good and to have it look nice for my kids. You know, they're not perfectionists. They're not expecting perfection. And to make something that they love then spend way too long and have it turn out never perfect. It's never gonna be perfect. But I think done is better than not done. And I know my kids are gonna love this. So imperfect bondage work and all. I am so pleased with this cake. And Kel absolutely loved it. And that is my favorite part. I hope he remembers it forever. I'm not going to lie, this little hack may have changed my cake making for the rest of my life because decorating is the most fun part. And I know my son's going to love it. He actually helped me decorate it. Normally I try to keep the cakes a surprise, but he really wanted to be a part of it. You saw him adding the sprinkles with me and putting some indents in the perfect frosting. But you know what? This is his cake and his fun, so I didn't really care. If you have ever wanted to make fondant and you haven't tried it or if you're looking for a recipe, I'm going to share with you my fondant playlist that teaches you how to make marshmallow fondant, how to color it, and how to store it. It's so much easier than you're going to think. 
Also, if you are just interested in seeing another cake that I've made, I'm gonna share with you a wedding cake that I made last summer. I made it for my dad. I don't make wedding cakes on the norm, but it was fun to make, and I'm gonna share that with you over here. Check out one of those videos.